Hi everybody, thanks for joining us back for Service Year Alliance's Surviving Your Service Year series. Today we're going to be focusing on budget. There are many tips to manage your finances, but while doing a service year, you will need to do some practical budget budgeting techniques to keep you afloat. Adopt some of these useful tips now to make the most of your stipend and learn skills you can use beyond your service year. Budgeting 101. This may seem obvious, but here it is. If you don't know where you are spending your money, you don't have control over it. Whether you are earning a service year stipend or a six-figure salary, knowing all of your expenses and making sure they are within your income, aka having a budget, is the foundation of a financially sound life. The guide to budgeting from The Balance is a great place to start for newbies. Figuring out your income. The first step of making a budget is figuring out your income. Apart from your service year stipend, you may have other forms of income from side jobs or other sources. Remember that you should use your post-tax amount when planning the amount you have to spend in your budget. Also, decide on the time frame for which you are creating a budget. Many people have monthly bills that get, but get paid bi-weekly, so keep that in mind when determining your, determining your expenses versus income. Find a budget system. There are many ways to organize a budget, and one is not necessarily better than another. It's just important to find the one that works best for you. Here are some examples of budget systems, templates, and apps that may help you create a budget. Some of the apps are Mint, which is free, Wally, which is free, You Need a Budget, which is low cost. Some budget systems, the 50-30-20 rule, and six ways to budget your money. Some basic budgeting tips that everybody should know. If this all seems overwhelming, we suggest starting with a simple line item budget. Start by figuring out your post-tax income. List out your expenses each month. Some are fixed, like rent and loan payments, while others are variable, like groceries and entertainment. Don't forget to add in those savings. Check that your income is greater than all of your expenses. Adjust if necessary by lowering your, lowering your estimates for spending on your wants. At the end of the month, see where you actually spent your money. Did you go over or under in a category? Expenses you should consider. When creating your budget, there are the essentials. These expenses are those that you can absolutely not live without, such as rent, utilities, food, not eating out, transportation, cell phone, a minimum monthly loan or credit card payment, insurance, whether that's home or health or car, and any other essential bills, child expenses, and pet expenses. Some other financial obligations. Before you get overwhelmed by all the money you should be saving, remember this all doesn't have, have to happen during your service year. Paying down debts and saving for future needs and wants should be factored into your monthly expenses in the long run. But consider starting now to save even a little bit per paycheck. You will thank yourself later. Tuition or student loan payments beyond the minimum amount are essentials. Other loan and credit card payments beyond the essentials an emergency fund, a 401k, IRA, or Roth IRA, or any sort of retirement fund that you may have set up. Even if you decide not to do this during your service year, do some research on the basics so you'll know some options for the future. A health savings account, investments, savings for future purchases such as housing and travel, and savings for whatever else you might want. Some personal choices. These are expenses each month that help you have a comfortable and happy life, though you could live without. Look over your last month and look over the last month or two to see where you have spent your money on average. It might surprise you to see how fast little things can add up. These can be a gym membership, new clothes, shoes, or household goods, Netflix, cable, music streaming, or other entertainment subscriptions, membership fees to Amazon, takeout in restaurants, coffee shops, 
alcohol in bars, social events, gifts, remember to factor in those holidays, travel, electronics, we all know you want that new iPhone, and convenience services like Uber or house cleaning or grocery delivery. Furnishing your space. If you are moving and need some items for your new space, save some money by purchasing necessities secondhand online or at thrift stores. Sometimes you can find high quality stuff at a much lower price and can even negotiate. Here's a pro tip. Travel to an affluent neighborhood and check out the thrift stores. You may find even nicer quality items. Sometimes these nicer items even make it to the curb on garbage days. One person's trash can be another's treasure. For things you need to buy new, it might be worth it investing in nicer pieces that will last you longer. But if that isn't an option, check your local dollar store to find essentials like mixing bowls or cooking utensils for a low price. Building a professional wardrobe. If you don't have a uniform for your service share and have to wear professional clothing, there are plenty of ways to save money when expanding your wardrobe. Look for timeless basics that can be worn with different outfits and that you can dress up or down. Make thrift store as your best friend. Using the same logic as with furnishing your space, you can often find great deals on items you would pay hundreds for elsewhere. Places like Goodwill, Buffalo Exchange, and Salvation Army are great places to start. Make it a fun outing with your service year friends. If nothing else, you'll get some good laughs trying on some of the 80s prom dresses. If you prefer online shopping or don't have any thrift stores near you, websites like Poshmark, ThreadUp, and Mercari are great options to buy clothes at a discounted rate. Check out all off-priced retail like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and Ross. You can find similar items to those sold at normal re retailers, but for a fraction of the cost. Exercise. We all know how important exercising is and luckily it does not need to cost much. Find a free workout video by searching YouTube or Pinterest. Running and hiking is free to do and gets you outdoors. If you like doing these activities with, with others, you could often find groups to join who get together for these activities. See if your local Parks and Rec or YCMA has free or reduced classes or workout equipment to use. Lots of other fitness centers and yoga classes offer free class or a free week to test out the type of workout. You can often test out a bunch of different classes around your area without having to commit to a year-long contract. You may also have access to public or free outdoor classes you can participate in. Yoga in the park anyone? Looking for a, a tough workout? See if the November project is near you. You'll meet new people and get a killer workout in as well. Don't forget to pick up a great Spotify playlist to accompany you. If you don't pay for music streaming services, Pandora Workout Station or YouTube both have free workout playlists too. Entertainment. There are endless opportunities to find things to do at little to no cost. Be open to trying out new things. Some low cost entertainment options are joining a, a listserv to get free concerts, festivals, and other events in your town. You could even go old school and read a newspaper for upcoming events. Your local library is a great source of information as well. Can't afford to go to that event or concert? Try volunteering for a shift. You help out for a bit, sometimes you get free food or swag, and once you're done, you can get in for free and be able to enjoy your time after your shift is complete. If you are a movie person, consider joining MoviePass. For just under $10 a month, you are able to go to unlimited movies a month. Make sure theaters in your area allow you to use MoviePass before purchasing a membership. If you live in a college town, see if they have any fun free events. You may even be able to catch theater productions for very cheap. Some museums and zoos provide a free or reduced admission several days throughout the month. If you're a frequent visitor, buying a pass might be a better option overall. Check out Groupon to save money on services, products, or e events in your area. Meetup is a great way to find new people to do fun things. 
which is especially great if you've relocated for your service year. Create your own fun. Invite some friends over and have a game night. Many libraries have board games that you can check out. Treat yourself. Though going out to eat, grabbing a coffee, and going out for happy hour shouldn't be a regular part of your routine, sometimes you need a pick-me-up to get me through a tough week. Make the most of your money by looking for specials, splitting the cost with your service year friends, using coupons, or joining rewards programs or apps that earn points for your purchases. Animal lovers unite! If you are an animal lover but can't have a pet with you during your service year, consider different ways to get your dog and cat snuggles. Volunteering at a local shelter or rescue group, pet sitting, or dog walking are great ways to spend time with pets, and you might even make some extra money. Plan a staycation. If you are starting to get burned out and need a vacation but can't afford to travel, planning a staycation might be the perfect thing for you. Find some time, maybe even a three-day weekend, to disconnect, relax, and prioritize all your favorite things to do. That might involve having an all-day movie marathon, hiking, or having a DIY spa day. Other important financial considerations. An emergency fund. If you don't already have one, start setting up an emergency fund. Many experts recommend having an emergency fund of three to six months of paychecks and savings in case of a major life event or an emergency. While this is often difficult to do on a stipend, put away as much as you can now and then continue to build over time. It is also important to consider finances for your post-service year transition as you plan for potential gaps in employment, moving to a new place, or becoming a student. Taxes. Tax season will most likely hit at some point during your service year, and taxes are typically due on April 15th. While taxes vary from state to state, here's a quick crash course to get you started. Check out the free federal tax preparation available if you made under $64,000 last year. Seek out resources like the IRS Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, which is VITA, uh, which offer free tax help for taxpayers who qualify. Additionally, AARP offers tax aid. If you have any concerns, set up an appointment to speak with a tax accountant about your finances. Save with discounts. Access member discounts if you join AmeriCorps alum at Service Year Alliance after your year. You can also check out an up-to-date listing of alum discounts. Some of these discounts are available to currently serving core members as well. If you are currently a student or if you are going back to school after your service year, always check out to see if there is a student discount you can use before making a purchase. From tech companies to clothing stores, many places offer discounts just for being a student. A final note, creating and sticking to a budget is not easy. Think about what you absolutely need, especially during your service year you may have to make some sacrifices. Though it may not be fun to decline an offer to dinner or miss a concert you've been wanting to see, sticking to your budget will help you feel less stressed and so much happier throughout your service year and after.